Okay, ready. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Intune.Training, the place to learn how to use Microsoft Intune, the Stephen, Adam, and Ben show. Hey, boys! Welcome hey, back, Ben! Oh, welcome thank back, you. Ben. Yeah, that was, um, yeah, that, was a, that was a good way to start. Yeah. I've been goofing around <laughs> for an hour here. Let's get rolling already. Okay, all right, cool. So somebody said I have to drive, and I don't know what we're doing, but we're Ben says it's going to be really neat. So yes, I like. Uh, see. Yeah, it is. It is going to be neat. Adam's a little tired. Um, I think he's had too many adult emotion. drinks. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to play around. Uh, basically, we're going to recreate the uh, the graph explorer, but we're going to do it in VS Code um, with with a couple of tools that uh, are pretty easy to set up. Um, this will I'm just with. allow us to test things. For, for our Intune environment, um, all in one application. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. So I think we should uh, get into it. So Adam, would you like to share your screen? I mean, sure, why not? Okay, cool. All right, I have VS Code open even. Do I need to update it? Because it's on 147.2. Yeah, give, it, give it an update, give it an update. Oh, all right. What could well. possibly go wrong? <laughs> We're doing it live. Setting, setting us up for failure right here. Let's do it. Oh, it's fine. Uh, hey, did you guys see that video of uh, Henry Cavill doing his uh, PC build? Sure did. It was it's pretty beautiful. amazing. Pretty I amazing. watched it. I watched it without sound. Um, so I think after this, I might have to uh, turn it on and just chill out and watch it because I hear it's got a pretty good soundtrack. Yeah, You've it does. It. Yeah. You've missed it. Oh, the, the, the soundtrack just makes it. <laughs> it really does. That's a lovely background you got there. Hey, thanks. Nice guy made that logo for me. Yeah, sweet. I gave him money and he made it. It's neat. Oh, very good. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's. Should just... I change my color so people can see it better? Um, no, because we're not in a bright room. Let's let's keep it dark. Dark is nice. All right, dark mode. Um, is. okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install the extension that we're going to be playing with. Um, so over on the left, if you click on the extension icon, uh, which is that one there. That one? Yep, extensions. Right. Uh, and just search for REST client, or even just REST should be enough. Uh, REST, I could use some REST right now. Or another drink. Uh, so it's the top <laughs> one there, REST client for Visual Studio Code. So just right. install that. Oh, it's hit a million downloads. Yeah, That's it's impressive. it's really, really good. And you'll see why it's hit a million dollars uh don't worry about that right now just say no a million dollars they've, they've got a million, million dollars. dollars out of this yeah yeah and they got a million dollars i, I meant a million downloads it's uh oh, it's, it's oh, okay. really good steven so, it must be that aussie accent that was confusing you there yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly uh okay that's done now you need to pull down the repository that i made for this demo let me chuck it in the chat I've already done oh, this, but I'll do it again. I know, I have it. I have it right Oh, here. you do? Look. You've got it? What? Yeah. Look at that. There's something cool. with your pen earlier. Excellent. Uh, just click on the, on. yeah. Do that Before. guy? Yep. yep. I do this the long way every time. I don't I don't trust Git, so, you know, okay. there's that. Git, clone. Okay, granddad. Oh, I mean, it's, it's true, though. It's how I roll. Uh, oh, boy. Let's go in here. It's got some GitHub community. I'm going to stick it in here. Um, and it'll name a folder for me, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It'll save it to the... That's true. So, Ben, I, I really, really like the uh, readme.md in there. It's very oh, descriptive. You. It's a demo to play with Graph and VS Code. I... That's right. That's, okay, so that's all it is. now. And this demo is going to stay up forever um it's it's got a couple of things in it that we'll see now um if anyone wants to follow along with this um download or clone clone the repository and have a play along um i promise you it's super easy um and this this uh repository has got a couple of tools in it that allow you to um authenticate and then it stores the authentication details locally so that you can continue to uh continue to play along i you know you could just get rid of these extra words and just name the repository demo to play with graph and vs code because i could do that type. <laughs> uh open open please would you like to so, open a clone repository down the bottom 
Down bottom. Uh, nope. Mm, bottom right. Oh, there. Yeah, there, there it is. <laughs> I'm telling you, I don't do this. That's all right. That's fine. So uh, the the part of the issue is that at work, um, they block GitHub without a bunch of jump through a bunch of hoops, and so I just don't get to use it regularly. So don't do it. Um, so the only thing that we actually need to do, um, yeah, we, we can look at this. This is basically just the authentication um, process that we're doing. Um, and this is actually, I think, no, it won't fail. This is good. Nah, bro. Um, I wrote this for a <laughs> user group that I did, uh, Dupsug. Um, uh, it was a Dutch PowerShell user group. I did it very quickly and very dirty, um, but it works. Um, so all we need to do is uh, just go to the uh, .local env file and just make sure that the tenant ID and the client ID are set up correctly. So the tenant ID that we're using um, is, uh, so it can either be the ID or the fully qualified domain name of your tenant. In this case, it's intune.training. Uh, and the client ID we're gonna be using is the client ID from the sample code uh, that most people are aware of. Um, however, uh, we can actually create our own if we want to, uh, and I can we can potentially show you how to do that now, um, but we'll just, for, for, for the sake of, uh, speed um, this will allow us to get access to our intune environment and give us all the permissions that we need to to have a play around uh, um, i guess the quick question is you said sample code is there i mean how do i how would i look this id up where, where is this so to look it up what you can do adam is if you go to portal.azure.com well, i was just googling it but that's fine mm -hmm. it's okay oh, we'll talk it through what we're doing here uh, yeah. azure office yeah, <laughs> hang on, that's my default. We're not I have a special, special one here. Ah, uh -huh. you don't want to um, show off all your email addresses. Oh, I've already done that numerous times. <laughs> um, Haven't we all? My internet is so slow today. I don't know, rendering web browsers has been really slow this afternoon. Evening, it's tomorrow already. Yeah, what's up with that? Anyway, uh, so let's just imagine that we look that up and we will come back yeah. to that. All right, so. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to press uh, F1 to open up the command palette. Yes. And then we're just going to type in task. Task, all right. And we're going to run task, which is uh, about halfway down. That's the one. So we should see one example. Now, this is uh, the example that's in this repository. So you only see this if you clone the repo. Um, so just uh, click on that or hit enter. Generate oh, bearer token. Generate. Yep, generate bearer token. Yep. Not the one called Jake. Uh, that's correct. Or TypeScript. Yes. Okay. Or Grant. Hmm. Oh, and okay. Is there dependencies required for this? There is dependencies. Nah, bro. Um, nah, bro. Um, okay, so. Uh, this requires uh, a, a PowerShell module to be installed, um, which is the um, mcell.ps module. Um, the reason we're doing this is uh, it's it should be fairly common knowledge by now, um, but the ADAL library or the the uh, what is it Active Directory authentication library um, is has a scheduled end of life date now um, and is being uh, replaced with the Microsoft Authentication Library or MSAL. Um, so I strongly recommend that uh, if anyone wants is working on things uh, that requires authentication, um, that they start looking at MSAL. Um, and this module that we're getting is maintained by Microsoft uh, and it is just a really easy way to authenticate into any part of Azure. So it's, it's recommended to get this. I just got to accept the license. It's actually a license attached to it. That's impressive. Yeah, um, and this this caught me because I was using uh, the I needed to download the MCL uh, library for a module that I was publishing to the gallery, and I forgot to put in the accept license flag, and it kept bombing out, and that's why. <laughs> yes, it will. <laughs> okay, uh, so let's just try that again. It should should work now. Um, F1 run task and generate bearer token. Uh, no, we might need to reload uh, the instance. Uh, just press F1 and reload. There we go. I've been using that one. It's a good one. It is good. Like it. Do I need to import the module now, or do you think it's... Uh, it should be there. Um, should give it a go now. Port, so. F1. Run. Oh. <laughs> 
uh, try importing it then. It's like it's maybe that maybe it's the update I just did. Mm, maybe. Uh, switch your um, the terminal screen to uh, integrated console. Yep, and just rerun that. All right, let's try it again. Um, does this need to be in PowerShell five or seven? Five or seven will work. You just need to have the module installed. Um, Yep, you're using that. Hmm. Well, Ben, I mean, look, I appreciate that you wanted to be part of the team. We're still going to call you intern, even though you've successfully <laughs> created a failed demo uh, repeatedly. Thank you, so um, thank, you. thank you for making, making us all part of it and everything. But we're ready to go ahead and go with the real thing whenever you're ready. Uh, okay. How do we <laughs> <run away? laughs> Um, <laughs> Get an uh, imsal token. I mean, how's that not a? How's well, that not okay, a, go in your in your terminal. Change back over to your interactive. This? Hold on, let's yeah, just just go to stop typing stuff up there. Go to your no, no, no. I like doing I like doing this. Let's see. Yeah, yeah you're really still going to need to switch. Mm. Uh, no, because it's not a. Uh, you need to do get command dash module. Yeah, I learned that one before too. There you go. So, get MSAL token. Yep. Um, so we can we can just tie. Uh, no, because I want it. I want this to work. It does work. Um, what's the difference? No, <laughs> wait, wait, no, no. You didn't finish that statement. It works on my machine. Uh, yeah. Works, uh, it doesn't work you, on mine either. In the command palette, so press F1 and just type in um, uh, like T E just terminal. Start typing terminal. Um, we want to set the default terminal. It should be uh, just type. Okay, type in select default shell. That's the one. Uh, change it to PowerShell. Which one? The the third one. So, yeah, okay. and just reload the session. We'll try it one more time. It will work. Wow! Look at that. Ta -da! Uh, okay. So just say not now. So what we need to do is we just need to select that code and go to that location. Um, so you can control click. Yep, yep. Okay. So this is a new form of authentication uh, that is available with MCell. Um, it basically is designed to allow us to authenticate on devices that don't necessarily have the ability to get to a browser. Um, so it'll pop up this, and you can actually so you can do this on a different device if you say you wanted to authenticate uh, on your phone instead of uh, on this machine. You could go to um, it's either Microsoft.com device login or aka.ms forward slash device login. Um, and then you can um, put that code in and authenticate on behalf of the application um, that we're trying to use. Uh, Sorry, guys, I have no idea what's going on here. I should probably just reboot my machine while I'm recording and sharing my screen, right? What could possibly Which go wrong? Yeah. Check that in. And next, it's going to ask you to uh, authenticate once this gets through. Good grief. I thought you had a fast internet um, connection there. Yeah, well. I do, Must be all I don't, of the uh, kids yeah. sitting there and playing Call of Duty on your uh, network. Yeah, at 12.30 yeah, did you, a.m. I did you forget to turn off the torrent server? <laughs> It's my wife downstairs watching Netflix is what's going on. Uh, yeah, that'll do. <laughs> yeah, it will. Okay, so that's that's done now. So we can close out of that tab or just minimize it. 
Um, all right, so we can see here that we've got a, a snippet of the, the authentication token and it's saying that auth token has been updated. Um, so what we can do now is just to see what that task has actually done is uh, over on the left, uh, just go to the uh, Explorer, yep, and open up uh, the VS Code folder, the .VS Code folder, and just go to settings.json. And we can see here that we've got some information stored in uh, the environment of the workspace that we've got. So we've got the auth token in its full entirety. We've got the expiry date, and then we've got the content type. Um, this is all we need to actually authenticate now um, with the with the REST uh, client extension to VS Code. Um, the quickest way to get this to sort of reload in our environment is just to type uh, go back up to the command palette and type in REST. And we want to look for uh, switch environment. And yep, just say no environment because we haven't set anyone except for the shared one. OK, so now that's loaded. What we need to do is create a new file just in the root of this. Uh, uh, now, best way to do it is uh, just right click and new file. Nope, on a blank spot file and just call it uh, test dot rest excellent okay so now we have our test environment ready to go um, so I guess the first example will just be like to get uh, like user details about yourself or whatever um, so we're gonna we'll start by typing um, uh, we're going to get that. Uh, let me let me actually. I'm going to do this with you because I always forget how to do this. Yes. Uh, so we're just going to start typing get. Yeah. Should I do live share? Uh, no. no, it's fine. Uh, the top one. Actually, because your internet yeah, probably wouldn't handle it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just like that. Cool. And it starts filling some stuff out for us. So what we're going to do is we're just going to type in uh, the URL that we want to do a request with. Um, so in this case, it'll be HTTPS uh, colon forward slash forward slash graph.microsoft.com. Uh, is it uh, probably beta or V1? Let's do beta. Just and do, then do beta. And then yeah, and just me, right? OK, cool. So now yep. underneath that, so new line, um, we're going to type in um, authorization. It should autocomplete to, yep. And we're going to put in, so we stored the authentication details uh, in that in that environment thing. So what we can do is we can expose that because it's basically a variable. Um, so if we put in, uh, just type in auth, A-U-T-H, and just, uh, yep, that's it. So that's now stored uh, the details of the environment in, in here so we can reuse it. Um, the next thing we need to do is another line and just type in content type. And just, yep, that's the one. And just type in, uh, I think I've got it in the environment. It's just content type. Oh, that'll work as well. No, that's that's fine. But we could do it like that. Okay. okay. So just okay. So now difference. that we've now that we've formed this is the the basis of a of a uh, an internet request or a REST call. Um, up above where it says get, just click on send request. And we'll give it a second because your internet is uh, is doing things. You can see it's waiting. Ooh. It's it's forming that request. It'll keep saying that until I zoom back out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, sweet. So uh, just shrink your terminal for a bit. Um, this this side screen is the response from, from that call that we've made. So we've got the header information at the top from lines 1 to uh, 13 or 14. And then underneath that, we've actually got the return uh, JSON data from that request. I'm zooming um, so, in. Sorry, hold on. Yeah, yeah. OK, there we go. Um, so this just shows, uh, you know, we, we really don't necessarily care too much about the header info, um, but everything uh, from line 15 down is the content that we wanted. So this is the information about, uh, you know, the user, which is Adam uh, from this endpoint. Um, so this just shows you straight away that we've now got an ability to interact with Graph with a fairly small amount of code that we've written um, that is repeatable. Um, and the best part about it is you can uh, write as many uh, requests in this file as you want, save it, and then share it with people. Um, and they will um, be able to see exactly what you've done to replicate the, the requests. Uh, and it just makes that sort of stage in uh, testing 
a lot more transparent, uh, which is uh, which is pretty cool. So what's neat about this is that um, <clears throat> so we haven't released the video yet, but there's a video coming out next week. Um, or it'll be out by the time it, sure. it will. It will come out. It will have come out last week when you see this mm -hmm. video. How about that? Uh, wow. Um, but where we got into the graph, uh, into we talked about the Intune graph, and we were doing Power BI, uh, trying to show how to connect Power BI to uh, Azure and Intune to pull in data there. And so we looked at the Graph Explorer as part of that. So watch that one to get some more context on using the Graph Explorer and kind of what this hopefully helps um, supplement or replace even for your needs. Yeah, exactly. So I just wanted to show another couple of cool things that you can do with this. So like, obviously this is just a call and we've got some data, but we can't actually do anything with that. Um, you can copy, uh, if you have a look up on the top right, there's a whole bunch of things where you can save the response data. You can then do things with it. Um, which is which is cool if you if you wanted to work with that. But if you wanted to get some data from this and then do another call using that, like you would programmatically, either in PowerShell or Python or whatever language you wanted to work with, um, you can replicate that experience here. Um, so what we'll do is uh, above the so in the uh, intern test dot rest file that you created. I see I see the joke there. Intern, very good. Um, just uh, put a new line above that. So just press enter uh, and then put in uh, three hashes. <laughs> yes, that's, that's exactly <laughs> it. And just give just give this a name. So just just call it uh, me test or something like that. It doesn't really matter. Um, the three hashes uh, put a space in between uh, the hash and the the letters. Um, this um, format, so the three hashes and then text denotes uh, a single rest requ uh, re re request. So if we do another line of three and then put something else underneath that, it'll allow us to store multiple uh, requests. Uh, actually do it underneath, uh, like on line six. Yeah. And then what we're going to, yeah, you test, exactly. So now if we type in get and just, yep. So now we can see we can start forming out some other things. So what we're going to do is I want to get uh, I want to get the same data, but I want to get it from the user's context uh, or the user's endpoint. Um, so we need to actually um, store the results of the first query in a variable. Um, so if you go out to line two and just put in a, a single hash, uh, this is something I'm going to need to test myself. I'm pretty sure it is. It's beta slash users. Uh, yeah, 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 no, that's 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 fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to go uh, single hash and then name. Let me just open up my uh, one that I did earlier. Oops. Don't mind a little bit of data, guys. This is so just, just to tanker. clarify, this is using the... Uh, I mean, what we're in here uh, using the REST, this is using the extension, the REST extension that we installed. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes, that's that's right. Um, okay, so on line two, uh, put a space in between the hash and name, and then just put in a, a, an at symbol in front of name. And this is denoting a variable uh, called name, and then a space, and then just call, say, user. So we're just defining the name of the uh, of the variable. So if you uh, run that request again, so just click on uh, send request, we're going to get the same response back uh, on the uh, on the right hand side. So we'll just give it a sec to finish. This is where it gets really really cool. Yeah, um, cool. So that's that's rerun. Um, now what we've what we've done by putting that uh, line two in is the results from so the request body and the header information is now stored in a variable called user. So if we go down to our uh, next uh, rest call that we're going to make, let's uh, call that uh, beta slash users. Is it just users or user? Users, I believe. Users. Yeah, cool. So what we're going to do is I want to get uh, if you scroll down the response. On the right, I want to get the ID. So we're going to get that by, um, this gets a little tricky to type it in, but we're just going to uh, put in uh, two uh, curly braces. 
uh, another set. No, inside each other. Like inside each other, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Type. Double curly braces. That's it. And just type in user dot. Yeah, so <laughs> this doesn't really work very well. So this is what I was saying. It's, it's, a, little, it's a little hairy. So just delete <laughs> all there. of that. Yeah. And get rid of the included it's double just... curly braces. <laughs> for for an extension that's got a million downloads, uh, it's it's still very uh, very uh, rough. Uh, so we're just going to type in response, and then dot body, and then dot value, and we're going to uh, actually get rid of the dot there. We're going to put in a square brace. So square bracket and then put in zero because we just want the first response. Even if there's only one, we just need to define that we're getting the first response. And then dot ID. Okay, so what we've done here is we've actually programmatically stepped through the data that we've re re returned. We've got the first value from the body and we're selecting just the ID. Um, so now um, we're going to put in, if you just copy lines four and five, and just paste them underneath. Copy, not paste. Uh, not cut. I don't know what happened. I copied and hit delete. I don't know. That's okay. good. Uh, so now I'll click send request and we'll see what happens. We'll sit and wait. Should have uh, we should have some music in the background. I'll add that in post. Yeah, put the uh, put the uh, Barry Barry White stuff. Yeah. So that's I think we'll get as many views as Henry Cavill got. No. Uh, request resource not found. That's interesting. It must be user then. Let me check. Could have checked it, you know, already. Well, yeah, but where's the fun in that? Exactly. It's true. That, that would mean we're actually putting production value in. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. I would look it up, but we'd be here for... Ages. I'm just going to paste in an example that's uh, a little more advanced. If you just want to uh, copy, yeah, it should be slash users. Yeah, it should be users. Sorry. It could just be the uh, the variable response body you know, hasn't worked properly. Yeah, potentially. Um, let's just do another one. So this is a fairly simple one, but it uh, shows the same thing. Maybe just create a new. Um, uh, a new file. Um, so what we're doing in this scenario is we're defining a variable called base URI, which is just graph Microsoft beta, so we don't need to retype it. Um, and then we're calling it um, in uh, in this format. So we're just base URI device management scripts. So what this does is it's going to get any PowerShell scripts that we've got um, in our Intune environment. And then we're going to step through and we're actually going to uh, get the assignment details as well as the, the sort of inner data from that. So just run the, uh, it's not going to work because put another um, in line 11, put in some, yeah, three hashes. And click on send request. I guess the interesting one is do we have any PowerShell scripts in the Intune.training tenant? One. No. Two? Okay, cool. Do we? I don't know. Uh, we did some tests early on. I think I think Ben wrote them. Um, or I wrote one, which was That's copy cool. a desktop shortcut down or something sweet this will work so this um this is actually quite interesting and this is uh what hey, i did is mine I'll... i wrote that one yeah Give me... but you see uh script content it says null um so what what you actually need to do to get oh. the information from that content is you need to then the next request you need to actually step into uh the the resource with the id to get that information so it doesn't directly show that um at the the sort of outer layer. So what we're doing, it's, it's the same deal. Um, we're just getting the ID of the... Uh, so the reason why the other one failed is because we didn't actually run the task above it. Didn't we? To populate the variable. No. Uh, okay. 
Well, let's finish this one. And we'll let's go finish this one. So yeah, so we're doing the same concept, right? We just want to get the first result. And we want to we want to get that information. So if we, we just want a successful quest. demo, Stephen. Yeah, it's over. Okay. Hey. There we go. Look at that. So now you can see uh, script content line twenty two has got heaps of data there. That's in so uh, base sixty four encoding um, that we can re encode and we can see the contents of the script. Um, we also, uh, if you look at the the actual uh, request that we put through the URL, it's got a um, expand equals assignments in it. Um, what that's doing is it's going through and it's actually getting um, the assignment details of you know how we're deploying it out to our uh, devices or users um, and and returning that in the uh, response as well. So we can actually see who we're deploying it to, um, whether that's required or excluded. I don't actually believe you can do exclusions in script deployments yet. Um, but you know that's that concept works for anything that you're pulling back from Intune as well. So we should be able to see that in the response. There we go, so some you, context. If you look in the um, chat, I just posted a working one for the user issue. Oh, cool. Because we didn't actually have to hit the value object, it just works straight off body.id. Oh, you know why? Because um, the the me uh, query is actually, it's probably not a, an array yeah. result. That's correct, it will never be an array. Yeah, because it's always returning one. Yep. yep. And the reason why you could use this as well is if you wanted to bring back your managers or the manager object. So right now we're using ID, but there's no reason why you couldn't change it to go and use the manager object. Exactly. Uh, the manager's email address. Yeah. Um, I'd say we would do that in our tenant, but we don't actually have managers to find. <laughs> hey, listen, we're our own managers. Um, right. So so basically what you're saying is, so I just re-ran this one to yep. populate user. And so yep. what we're saying is that because me, oh, oh, because me only returns a single result, it's not an array. So you yep. can't, so putting this here is actually what's breaking it. Yeah, well, correct. And the value component as well. So you don't Oh, because value. we don't have a value. Gotcha. No. Okay. So just response body dot ID. Yeah, and now, you see there's no squiggly line underneath it now. Yeah. Oh, go. look at that. That's cool. uh, so like if we would have just like done this, I wonder if you're cool. Yes, it does all, rest, all, almost rest auto plugin. complete. So what it'll do is it'll oh. do for response, but it doesn't do to body and underneath that. Yeah. So it can't step yeah. through the results body. super well. And then I then you've got to know what you're going to put in there. And this yeah. case you were going to put ID. And then just run that send request. And then, so the cool thing about this is obviously, so, you know, because we've got the ability to store results or, you know, uh, text information in variables, that means that you can do multiple hops. So if you wanted to, so we've obviously done the me to get the ID of, of Adam's account, and then we've done another request using that variable. If we then put in um, hash name and then gave this request a variable name, we could then use the information from that in another request. Um, and if you sort of start doing this long enough, you start thinking, uh, this is kind of how we build uh, our automation solutions in PowerShell. It's just understanding what the requests are and storing that data and then doing something with it later. Um, so this to me is how I build out any of my automation processes. I start here, I understand what the queries are, and then I transcode that into another language that I'm gonna use, which is generally PowerShell. Nice. Hmm. Cool. So I think that covers off uh, yeah. the whole story. Um, That's, is there anything yeah. else we want to go over? Well, so Ben, from my perspective, I'm looking at this saying, yeah, okay, so you showed me a couple, kind of get it. Um, so, uh, Okay, so we said we already established that the extension that we installed is what's giving us this REST thing. Correct. But then you gave me the, I mean, we installed this repo, which just has this, the auth um, function. Yep. And yep. that's it. And, well, in, in the settings, JSON, uh, which we then used to, uh, so 
it looks like okay so we've got a task so okay i get it so instead of for those uh, those of us at home i'm trying to piece it all back together here so okay so we yes. we could have just done run get off as a as its own standalone powershell to do what we did when we were getting the task that's um, correct okay so you did the fancy bit of using a task to to get us to run this uh script and that's the piece that was like wait where'd that task come from so that makes yeah, more sense now okay, okay. yeah so then from about, there you're just you're simply taking the well-known um uh, in local it, env local sorry env. yeah local env yeah. you took these these items you pass them into this get auth uh thing which then goes out to our tenant create is prompts us for the auth token to that we then put in the browser that then got stamped in, into our settings json which yep. then gets used by the rest extension that's correct Woohoo! look i did it followed it you nailed it um Yay. one thing i actually okay so before we wrap up this is a uh, not not on uh the the rest client um but this is something to do with the the mcell uh dot ps uh, module that you installed. I just sort of want to show you something because I had someone reach out to me uh, and they were talking about um, how can I prove to my business that the the AAD application that I want to use to do my automation stuff um, doesn't have any nasty permissions um, in a, a reportable way. So like, you know, obviously if you if you want to register an AAD application that someone else has created, the first thing that happens is it comes up with a screen saying, you know, here are all these permissions, but say it's already in there and you just want to do a review of what those per permissions are. And in this case, quite a lot of people have this, uh, this app ID that we're using already in their environment, but many might not have remembered what the permissions are. We can actually get that info um, using the, the MCEL module. Um, so just, uh, we could probably just write it at the bottom of the screen of this script. Um, we're just going to type in, um, get, uh, just set a variable name actually, just auth equals, and then get mcell token, mcell token. Yep. And the first thing is uh, dash client ID and just uh, paste in. Uh, the client ID. And tenant. And just engine.training. Maybe put quotes around it. <laughs> and then uh, dash device code, because again, we're using uh, patch 7. Um, and just run that command. So, uh, you'll need to change into the interactive and expand that out. Just give that a second. Man, your internet is really bad today. Um, all right, yep. so just copy that uh, code. Actually, I'm going to copy this back over here. Actual browser I intended to be in before. Yeah, it's it's very strange because I mean, obviously my internet's working because we're streaming and I'm recording and the whole deal. But yeah, uh, it's just web requests, so I think I just need a reboot. Yeah, it's probably sure. that new Edge eighty four or whatever that I got. <laughs> it's just the, like that initial resolve seems to be taking forever. Yeah, because yeah. uh, in PowerShell here, it, it, I, I started you know, clicking be, just uh, send requests uh, repeatedly, and it was hitting yeah. it over and over. What? Maybe you just need to uh, update your DNS server. You, yeah, you it's always DNS, right? Moment. Well, no, you remember that there is the secret issue that uh, is going on at the moment. True. Yeah, it could be. That could be a problem. Yeah. Um, but that's okay. getting yeah. hacked. Well, also, um, I'm having to talk to Australia for all this stuff because that's where our tenant is. Oh, true. Is the tenant actually based in Australia? Yes. Yeah, right. Steve it's insisted on it. Idea. Steve said, you know what? I'm not going to I'm not gonna do this dog and pony show unless <laughs> we get to put this in to Australia 
tenant. So that's and then straight away we run into issues. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, let's go to Australia at that point. Uh, go to the get auth PS one. And okay, so we've we've got the the auth token now in that variable. If we uh, run that, we can see a whole bunch of information there. But if you type in um, the auth value dot scopes. and just run that. So we actually get all of the permissions that um, are, are now allowed to us uh, from that application. So you can see defaults, obviously default, but we've got device management apps, read, write all, um, device management configuration. So this sort of stuff's really good because uh, say uh, if, if you had a, an application that uh, someone suggested that you install and they've gone and changed some of those scopes and it's gone a little malicious or whatever, you can you can use this as a uh, an ability to go in and just every now and again just check what the scopes are um, to make sure that it's not doing anything malicious or it hasn't changed on you, um, which I think is really cool. Um, the other thing that the MCL library does that I really like is if you just type in um, auth the variable and then dot create, and just auto like tab that. Yep, and then close that bracket and just press enter. So this is a method existing in the um, variable that actually just appends bearer to the end. It's a real small thing, um, but it means that we don't need to create our own auth header anymore. We just throw that in, and that's basically what the get uh, dash auth dot ps one uh, function is doing. Um, so in the in the script that you're actually in. Um, yeah, so you can see it's it's output that. But if you look at get.auth, uh, scroll up a little bit. There it is there. Yeah. It's very cool. So there you go. That's, that's why I like MCL awesome. and why I like the REST client. That's awesome. Done. That's been a great demo. Absolutely. Well done, Ben. Well done. No, well done, we, Adam. You know, no. for an intern. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, boys. Well, good stuff. Let's wrap Thanks. it up. Thanks, Tim. See you next time around. Bye bye. See everybody. Bye. Find that in recording thing wherever it's at. And then waiting like five minutes for it to end. <laughs>